All right, all right. All right, so I was going to make an in-depth video for the session mode, and I got into it, and I just couldn't get it to work. I mean, I could get the session mode to work, but here's just a quick preface, and then I'll get right into some of the meat of the video. The session mode is awesome, hands down. The overview I did in the last video just barely scratched the surface, but it gave you a good idea of what's in there. You saw all the bands that were listed up there that you could load. You can make your own band. You saw the root note, the tempo, the types of scales that are available, and things like that. And I think at that point, that's enough. When you go into the session mode, the only thing that extra that was really there to show is that it will shift up and down the, the um, fretboard, and you can change the different root notes of the scale, you can change the different scales, and even while you're in one kind of scale, as you're playing, it will alter some of the more accented notes or the actual parts of the chord in the scale that you're playing. And that was really all there was to show. The, and now this is just me talking. Rocks and I'll start up the game because I want to wrap this part up pretty fast. And you'll see why in a minute. So the thing about playing guitar is when you get to a certain point, it feels amazing when you're just in the zone and you're going and you're rocking and everything's awesome. However, for other people watching, it's not quite the same experience. I mean, there are a lot of great guitarists out there, don't get me wrong. But I don't think anybody out there wants to watch somebody just jam around and go crazy for like 20, 30 minutes. And that's the trap in session mode. Is like It's almost too indulgent. So it's not really that pleasant enough to watch. To give you kind of like an outside the game example. I'm sure everybody's been to a party or some kind of gathering when some guy burns out a guitar. And they're playing everything they know and they're like trying to go for it, man. Because for whatever reason, maybe they heard like, you know, guitars players, guitar players get the chicks and they're trying to get some attention. And that's fine, man, to each their own. But one thing I've noticed is that like people who are doing that, they don't realize that like what they're feeling when they're playing they have an emotional attachment to what they're playing. And they put in the time they put into practice and they've developed an attachment. The other people around them, they don't really have that much invested in it. So it's like, oh, cool, he plays guitar, cool. I'm gonna, and that's just what the session mode videos turned into, man. It's like, oh, cool, somebody who plays guitar. And there are a million other videos of people playing guitar. Y'all don't need to sit there for like 30 minutes and watch it. So it just becomes like self-gratifying, you know. So we ain't going to get into the session mode. Y'all say enough of it to get a good idea. And I'm sure at this point y'all going to see videos of guys putting it up there and like just like going crazy in session mode. And, you know, it's, it's going to sound good. It's going to sound really good, especially if you're playing along with how they frame it. Y'all need another video for that. So, there are a couple other things I want to show, and then I'll wrap it up, give some final thoughts, and then also add in a little bit of things outside the game that can add to it. So, um, don't want to do session mode. First thing I noticed, just little nooks and crannies here. You got this icon up in the top right which is a orange shaded guitar that is your path and if you notice down the bottom where it says control my path if you hit control that was when in the beginning I said that when you first started up it says like which way do you want to play and you got your lead guitar and you got your rhythm guitar and you got your bass so again another improvement of the first one you pretty much had to choose guitar or bass and then you would have to exit the game and restart it if you wanted to 
switch over to bass. Now you can just do it right from this menu in the game. You also got your rhythm guitar, which brings up other charts for songs that you may have played. So if you watch the in-depth video on the learner song, you know I already went through that them cro Crooked Vulture song. So uh, we'll keep it on lead guitar. We'll go to the learner song. Learner song. And you notice, oh, they've patched the Steam. You got your DLC from the first game. You also got your on disc from the first game. Everything was seamless. Took like no time at all. It was awesome addition. Now I got like crazy amounts of songs. So go down to the them Crook Crooked Vulture song. What was that? Uh, Mind the race with no chaser. There we go. So there you see on the lead chart. I got the 93.7 that y'all saw me get. Now if I go to the control, switch over to the rhythm song, and go back, now you see I got 0% on that chart because I haven't played that chart yet. That's the backup the rhythm section of that chart. So you, that's how you access the extra, chart, the extra charts. Also, um, through Ubisoft points, you can add this thing where it does go back to lead oh, learn a song go back learn to a song. No, it's, it keeps it right where you're at awesome awesome bonus you don't have to start over from the beginning um, alright so control go back to lead go back to peace of mind and if you select that there's a couple of songs here that you'll notice this is where the bonus arrangements come in that you can have bonus lead parts and I've seen a couple of videos on some of the songs I've heard a couple of people talk about what's in those bonus lead charts and it sounds really fun it sounds like a definite cool enhancement there's some charts that have things like vocal arrangements or keyboard arrangements or like little extra things added in there and you, you can like transpose to a guitar chart uh, I saw one video, I think it was Painted Black, that actually used a capo, so, like, that that would have been the bonus one. It sounds so much better than the actual chart, because the bend on that chart it sounds a little off, but, um, at least for game registry purposes, but the capo video I saw sounded amazingly good, and so, also, at the end of this, I'm going to put a bunch of links in the description that are going to have uh, just access to supplementary things outside the game. Things that like people who might be getting into the game might, I, I'm pretty sure they're aware of them. Um, if you're in the Rocksmith community, totally making quotation marks with my fingers now. Um, but there's there's a lot of good things out there and um, I'll put some links in the description to this video kind of let people be aware of it because that, that is a big it's icing on the cake man it's it's just like it's a nice little addition it keeps the game fresh keeps the game interest and you get to interact with a lot of cool people so um, I'll put that there so I showed you the added DLC and the bonus and how to switch the charts so, so that's like some cool things that are in the learn song that I hadn't gone over. A lot of people, I'm sure, know some of this stuff by now just by go through play. But this is geared for more people who are on the fence. Do I want to get Rocks in 2014? Obviously, your answer is yes if you're asking me. But just for kind of FYI kind of stuff, not stop play. I still haven't gone to. I just don't have the time right now to put into it. Um, let, let's check out a lesson. Alright, so, just to give you an idea of what the format of the lessons are like, I've been getting this shifting recommendation. I don't want to go through all these lessons, obviously, because, I mean, that's a big part of buying a game. You get access to these lessons. So I'll start with, like, one simple one, and show you what the format of it is, and then, you know, like, you gotta buy the game to to have access to like all the cool stuff so I'm gonna give it away for free. Alright, so 
usually what happens is they'll show you a cool video, they'll explain what you're about to do, they'll give you a demonstration of what you're about to do, and then they'll make you do it. So I'll go real easy, and we'll do a shifting one-on-one. Let's see. Let's just get to it. Oh, you got the guitar chorus. Getting much, much more comfortable with that. When we talk about shifting, we just mean moving your hand up and down the neck to different positions. But before we get to that, let's take a quick sec and get to know your guitar a little better. Most guitars use dots or some other kind of inlay to mark certain frets. They're usually marked on both the fretboard and the upper side of the neck. Yup. The first dot is usually on the third fret. Go ahead and find that on your guitar. Got it. Let's just play the third fret on the low E string, the thickest string, highlighted in red. Also, be dots or inlays on the fifth, seventh, and ninth frets. Seventh, Let's find ninth, those. Uh, the twelfth usually has two, which are coincidentally, if you notice the pattern, like the, seventh fret. the numbers that are We're going on for the fifth fret. The display of the fret highway. That sounded like the seventh fret. We're going for the fifth fret. There we Great go. job. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. The next one up is the 12th fret, usually marked with a double dot. The 12th fret is special because notes 12 frets apart are what we call an octave higher. That means it's the same note, just at a higher pitch. Same thing with the 3rd and 15th frets. 12 frets apart, so it's another octave. Notice the dot pattern above the 12th fret just repeats the pattern from the lower frets. The dots above the 12th fret are the 15th, 17th, 19th, and 21st. Don't worry, as you play more, these fret numbers will become second nature, and you'll be able to quickly tell which upper dots are an octave higher than the lower ones. Give it a shot. Or just add 12. You got that one down. Damn straight. Amazing. Uh -huh. Outstanding. You say the nicest dance. Now here's a riff that will take some shifting to play. So now you notice how the, the number one is great. So that was kind of the intro. Then it steps it up, the number two. And then you see, like, okay, we'll show you a video. Here's that riff we'll go again. to the highway. Let's just listen to it. You can play after that. your progress in there and then at the rocksmith one that's where you complete the lesson it's like your, your final test awesome here's another one with a little more shifting to it Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Now your turn. All right, did it. All right. Awesome. Oh, flattery will get you everywhere. Okay, now let's put it all together in a song. Here goes. So, now this will be that rocksmith part of that. And then once you put everything that they taught you into place.
blueberries. Yeah. performance good stuff so there you go there's your format of your lessons uh, well, we'll go back and now I got my lesson done and again there's a whole bunch of these lessons here way too many to go but everything one I've seen so far has followed that basic format show you what to do give you a demo let you do it Add a little bit more to it, let you do it again, and then give you like a little session where you put it all together. Really, really great, especially for beginners. It also helps you, if you've never played Rocksmith before, to start getting used to Rocksmith format of teaching. So you're not just getting used to your guitar, you're also getting used to the game. And I think that's, that's just as important, because once you start getting the teaching method of Rocksmith down it really starts to open things up so alright well I don't know we'll, we'll kind of keep I think I'll take a break here and then we'll go into a couple of the other things I want to see so just keeping nice short tight videos here I'll be right back